Just a few hundred years ago, the human face was different. It was forward grown. Her wide profile and large dental arches ensured straight teeth and room for her tongue. Most importantly, she had plenty of space behind her upper jaw so she could breathe through her nose with ease. The modern face has changed. From childhood, her dental arches are less developed, crowding her teeth and giving her less space for her tongue, which impacts her airway. Many believe this stems from a number of causes, such as allergies that affect breathing. Another is the poor nutrition and softness of modern diets, causing toddlers to have underdeveloped chewing muscles and smaller dental arches. Because her upper jaw is too far back, she will struggle to breathe normally through her nose. To get more oxygen, she will compensate by opening her mouth to breathe, bringing her lower jaw down and back, creating a downswing of the face. This is how her undergrown upper jaw creates the appearance of buck teeth. She's actually compensating in order to breathe. If not corrected, the problem carries into adulthood. Extractions were documented in the 1600s as a way to treat crowding. Although they are a quick fix, they don't treat the problem of underdeveloped arches and have been implicated in harming the facial profile, making them the subject of much debate even today. In the 1800s, orthodontists in favor of extraction were looking for more effective ways of pulling teeth back and this is where the story of headgear starts. Not understanding the cause, those orthodontists believed in a myth that in bucktooth's children, the upper jaw was overgrown. They thought that if they restrained its growth with headgear, the lower jaw would catch up and the teeth would line up. Although studies done throughout much of the 1900s have shown otherwise, this myth became a part of the foundation of conventional orthodontics. First, studies have shown that headgear suppresses the growth of both jaws, causing them to grow down and back into the airway, creating a clockwise rotation of the lower third of the face. The industry coined these deformities the headgear effect. The growth changes caused by headgear carry on into adulthood. In order to breathe, she will slouch her head forward to prop open her airway, creating a lifetime of neck and back pain. This is the infamous forward head posture. A simple physics diagram shows that the growth stunting forces of headgear pass right through the skull. One study showed that headgear caused an abnormal rotation of the sphenoid bone, and no study has examined the impact of headgear on the skeletal blood flow and nerve pathways of a growing child, or its long-term effects. Having a healthy airway is crucial to the survival of life, and especially so during sleep. When muscles around the throat relax during sleep, a healthy airway stays open because the tongue is sitting forward and has enough space to be suctioned up against the fully grown palate. With underdeveloped jaws and dental arches, the palate is too small for the fully grown tongue, which is sitting back to begin with. When she sleeps, her tongue does not suction, rather it falls back and cuts off her airway. This is obstructive sleep apnea. Like crooked teeth, it's a modern condition. However, it can reduce life expectancy. Not surprisingly, obstructive sleep apnea is marked by the same traits that describe the headgear effect. Both jaws are grown down and back, creating a clockwise rotation in the lower third of the face. If you have already been exposed to orthodontic treatment that caused the headgear effect, there are ways to reverse what happened. If your child wears a headgear or is exposed to an appliance or practice that retracts structures involving tongue space and the airway, his or her lifelong health may be in danger. There are plenty of alternatives to these practices, so make sure to get multiple opinions. 
The myth of the overgrown upper jaw that needs to be held back has long since been replaced with science. Science has shown that young children can be buck-toothed naturally and that the lower jaw catches up over time with a fully developed upper jaw. Essential to this is nutrition, the use of chewing muscles early on in life, and good breathing habits. This means breathing through the nose with the mouth closed and the tongue resting up against the palate. Also, the practice of maxillary expansion has been shown for over a century to correct crooked teeth and improve nasal breathing space. And since 1918, orofacial exercises have been shown to correct mouth breathing habits. There are better ways. Right to Grow is an organization dedicated to ending the practice of orthodontic growth stunting. Please sign our petition online, share this video, and get involved in making the world a safer, healthier place for our children.